Hey guys, and welcome back. Welcome back to the Pits of YouTube. I've been an online reseller for the past 13 years or so, and today I'm talking about something that I actually learned on YouTube a few years back, and I'm talking about it because I went to a garage sale this past weekend and found some of the stuff that I'm featuring in this video, and it made me think that there's probably a lot of resellers that were like myself or just people in general that aren't aware that this stuff has some real value, and you can go out in the wilds and find it for really cheap because the assumptions are this stuff has no value so stick around to the second half of the videos where i specifically talk about this stuff that i'm being really vague about but hey this is youtube this is how it works sometimes but i appreciate you guys hanging out with me and watching the vid and let me know if you find any of this stuff this mysterious magical potion out in the wilds so i got a wee little problem although it is a good wee little problem to have and i'm not sure actually our problem is are inherently are they just bad to have can you have good problems i don't know and i don't know if i can answer that right now because this is a reselling channel not a philosophy channel <laughs> or is it over my shoulder here i'm way behind all this stuff i actually featured a video maybe two months ago about that featured this rack of jackets and this is stuff that i have to capitalize on right now as uh, i mentioned in that video twice a year spring cleanouts or the fall cleanouts where i'm constantly buying stuff that is out of season at thrift stores or uh, even estate sales garage sales you can get pretty cheap especially this stuff here uh, winter jackets they do huge clearance sales at the end of winter going into spring uh, a lot of thrift stores will do blow out 50 percent uh, 75 90 percent type sales off. So I always pick these up for two, three, four, five dollars. And these, some of these are 50 to a hundred and there's even a jacket in there, a leather jacket, which I think is like four or $500 and vice versa. When you're going into the winter and they do a big spring and summer, 50, 60, 70. And they also do that at big box retailers, if that's your style. I don't really like going to Targets and Walmarts and stuff, but that's certainly an option for those out there who do like to do that. They do huge. I know like after Halloween, uh, slowly over the course of the next couple of weeks, like Target does massive clear outs of, of candy aisles. I'm pretty behind because it is now almost mid-October. People are starting to buy winter jackets and I'm behind because I have not listed this stuff and it should be up. Uh, what I did was hire a part-time employee. This is the second time I've had a part-time employee. I had one and it lasted about a year and a half before things went sour, which I think I want to cover in another video for uh, those of you who have employees. If you've tried employees, how that's worked out for you. I would like to hear your experience about that. I'll certainly be sharing mine. There's some pros and cons uh, beyond just the financial aspect of it. But uh, I hired a friend uh, this time, somebody that I'm very familiar with, somebody that I trust very much. He's going to come over and help me get these jackets listed. And all these buckets here are also all clothes uh fall and cold weather clothing so i'm just way behind on clothes i hate doing clothes but they're so profitable which is why i do them what about you guys do you guys like doing clothes i know there's some exclusively clothes resellers out there uh i can't do that um it just it's a, it's a bit tedious but i know there's good money and that's why there are so many people that do it these jackets happen to be good winter jackets mostly and even like this one here, I got a $5, for example, this old, let's see, this old Hudson's Bay here. And I got this for $5 at a spring sale this past spring. And this I'm expecting to get like $150 to $175, somewhere in that range. So there's that. And then this this leather jacket. Uh, these I think these two things are the, the heavy hitters here, This um, this brand. Perfecto by Shot. It's like a vintage, and I think it goes for like four or five hundred dollars. I'll throw some comps up on the screen while I'm talking here. But it's super heavy. It's in excellent condition. I think I paid ten bucks for this. I don't recall, but it wasn't. It wasn't more than ten. It might have been less, but I want to say ten. Um, so this alone is a fantastic score once I, I get that list. The rest of these are pretty common brands, such as LL Bean, Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, what's this one? This is Mark Jacobs. Um, there's some vintage brands that I'm unfamiliar with. This Touchdown brand, which that's like the sub brand. I don't know actually what that brand is. But anyway, oh, some Carhartt stuff. 
So this needs to be listed ASAP as it is the middle of October. I don't want to miss out on sales and miss out when people are, are going on and buying jackets. So we're going to be doing that stuff. All this stuff here is going to be another video coming up for you guys that have been asking questions about board games because I sell a lot of board games specifically on eBay. Or sorry, <laughs> that, was a, that was a big uh, build up to the wrong answer. Uh, I sell a lot of board games specifically on Amazon, uh, a lot of board games and a lot of like DVDs and media. And that's pretty much all I sell on Amazon. And I still do eBay for some DVDs and some Blu-rays and some board games. But um, most of that stuff ends up on Amazon because this is all cheap stuff. This is all like 20, 25, 35, maybe $50 board games. As we all know, there are walls of board games every time you walk into any thrift store there are walls of board games and i think a lot of resellers when i watch a lot of resellers online that go into thrift stores it seems to kind of skip over the board game section maybe they're just ebay sellers and it is hard to turn a profit on ebay selling board games uh, but on the amazon fba program specifically is what i use when i can be buying two three four dollar board games and selling them for even as something as twenty dollars low as twenty dollars on amazon and still be able to double my money and turn my four bucks into eight bucks or my three bucks into ten bucks or whatever that's why i choose to still use the amazon platform although i don't love selling on amazon i really don't same with the dvds a lot of this stuff if you try to sell this on ebay it's not going to be profitable in used condition especially but on Amazon, using the FBA program, you can still make money. And I make tens of thousands of dollars strictly on uh, media and board games alone on Amazon. But like I said, that's a future video. I'm going to show you what I found at a like last minute garage sale. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. This, this particular sale was going on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I didn't expect to find very much. It was at the end of the street and I've kind of been out of garage sale mode in my head. So I didn't even think about going to look, but it was just like calling my name. It just kept calling me like, like the, the, the one ring. Take it. You cannot offer me this ring. I'm giving it to you. Don't tempt me, Frodo. I want to show you a couple of interesting things that I found at the garage sale that I think you might be interested in. So I have this giant mystery box of stuff. It's not really a mystery to me, it's a mystery to you, but it's gonna be less of a mystery because we're gonna go through it together right now. And I got everything for 20 bucks. I think individual items, uh, they were priced up to like 50 or 55 bucks. This is a Sunday sale, they wanted everything out. They offered me 20 bucks. I thought that was more than fair. I didn't feel like it was necessary to negotiate. And 20 bucks is a fantastic deal. Right on top, I find these shiny gold silvery uh, Ugg boots. And with winter coming up, I thought this would be, uh, I'll probably get like 30 bucks, I'm guessing, something like that. These are really clean. Uh, so happy to find these and they, ah, oh, smells like money. This thing, Wonder Sphere, this was, it's, it wasn't worth a lot. It's, see, this even had $8, which is just crazy that this was $8. I did look it up there and I think this sells for like 15 or 20 bucks. So it definitely wouldn't have been worth it to sell. Uh, if I had to pay eight bucks, but overall, you know, I'm paying a dollar or two for this. A couple of grab bag like toys, and um, this one says 10 bucks on it. This is free, so you can kind of see the prices were uh, a little up there and how good of a deal I ended up getting. I don't know if it's a really good deal when things are overpriced. Do you consider it a good deal when you get it for a, a decent price? I'm not sure how that works. Again, this is not a philosophical channel, or is it? But this one's full of Star Wars stuff. And I don't know, I don't see like a brand on it. So I don't know what these are, but I figured since we're bundling stuff up and I knew I was gonna get it for pretty cheap. I think it says 2014 on the bottom of some of these things, little Star Wars figures. So who knows, I'll probably auction them up, start it at a dollar and put shipping up to like, I don't know, 7.99 or so, just to cover myself in case these only sell for a dollar. I don't wanna uh, have to also cover shipping. So I'll put the price of shipping a little bit higher for these, maybe $7.99 or maybe like $8.99, something like that. Start at a buck and just see what happens. It's the kind of stuff that I do enjoy just putting on auction versus a buy it now. And I have no idea how to value this stuff. I will do a little research. Maybe I'll be surprised and maybe I'll find whatever is written on these that has some value. Same with this stuff. This is like, we got some, uh, normally I pick up uh, anything that I, when I find like bags of Ninja Turtles or little Marvel characters like this. Uh, if, it, if it's a good deal, I should say. And there's a lot of Marvel characters in here. And I don't remember the property of what these are. I think I ended up overall paying like a dollar or two for this lot. And I'll probably end up doing the same thing. 
just put them on auction. I'll try to do some research and see if these are all about, but I'll probably auction these off. Same thing, 99 cents, put it at like 8.99 shipping. This was one of the better scores of the sale. When I looked this up, this brand, um, this is a Tamrac camera bag. It's a vintage camera bag. And it's really nice condition, really clean. Not, I'm not familiar with it, but now I am. So it's good to know to look out for this brand, Tamrac. And I think this sells for like 35 bucks alone. Finally, what I think I have a really good score here and what people may not know about is I have this box of vintage perfumes. I think it's all perfumes. There might be a cologne or two. A lot of perfumes. If you go to list perfume on eBay, you can't sell like used perfume in the perfume category. It will only let you sell in used or sorry. <laughs> It'll only let you sell in new or new without box on occasion. Uh, you can't sell used perfume. However, there is a workaround and it's not like cheating or illegal or anything. There's a category which I think is called um, perfume collectibles. And if you choose that as your category, then you can sell used bottles. And a lot of people may not think that there is value in used uh, perfume bottles uh, other than obviously really high end you might assume that there's some however what i've been doing over the past 10 years or so when I, I found out through youtube that you could actually sell used vintage perfumes i've been looking out for them because you can get such good deals 15 bottles but i was really only interested in i saw a couple of big brands which is this is tom ford judging by the sound and what it feels like it's definitely more than 50 percent, maybe 75 percent or more Without knowing, I'm just gonna put 50% in my listing. And this Tom Ford, obviously it's a really good high-end brand. And I think I can get, I think there was a used one going for like 70 or 80 bucks. So I'm gonna list this for that 70 or 80 bucks and uh, see what I can get. And then same with this one. This one says Flora by Gucci. Obviously Gucci, great brand. And I think this wasn't huge, uh, huge profit, but even this tiny bottle was like 20, 20 bucks or so. This Chloe Narcisse. Uh, I think this was like 30 bucks used. So I'm gonna show you on my screen, I'm gonna pull it up and do a listing on this stuff real quick, just to kind of show you the, the workaround so you can sell some of this stuff. And the rest, I don't think we're, um, you know, popular brands. There is some old stuff though. And here's the thing with, with some of these old perfumes and old colognes, the reason that they still do have value is because you have a lot of people out there who are looking, just like we all, we all use the same, products over and over and we kind of uh, becomes our trusted brand and over time uh, companies stop making or producing particular products and they move on to new products and they stop making the old but people still desire their 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 trusted and true uh, brands so uh, and in particular products within the brand so this like bluegrass I'm not sure if they still make this but um, it looks it looks pretty old I'm gonna assume they don't but people are out there looking for this because their shelves have gone bare and they're looking for some bluegrass perfume. So they scour eBay, even for used bottles, they'll take what they can get. So don't overlook perfumes and colognes when you see them out in the wild. Okay, so we're gonna look up this Tom Ford patchouli, white patchouli here. I'm gonna open the eBay app and we're gonna pop in. Uh, you can see I recently looked it up. Tom Ford white patchouli here. I'm just gonna act like that wasn't there. Tom Ford white patchouli. And you can see here, you're going to get 45 results. All of these are going to be, you can see brand new, new without box, brand new, brand new. It's not going to show you any used items because they're just not allowed to be sold on eBay. Um, if you go to list them tip, uh, you know, through the typical perfume category. So the workaround is you go up to filter as we do. Obviously, make sure you're sold and completed items is on that standard operating procedure that didn't change any of the results we're still getting 45 results so you can see this brand new is selling for over a hundred dollars even the small bottles are, are 30 to 70 dollars here so what we're going to do you can see at the top here category it says fragrances uh fragrances right here so what we want to do uh, this is especially true when we go to list but to see if we can even sell Tom Ford, we're going to hit the category fragrances and see these categories that pop up here. And we're going to go to all categories at the top. So we're going to search for obviously all categories, which would mean not just uh, not just perfume, but also like collectible perfumes. You can see the results at the bottom have now changed to 52. 
So there's been some added. So to, to super to, to refine the search, if you go to the condition here, because we're selling a used one, we're going to want to hit that used uh, option there. And we're going to see that four results pop up. And there you can see it now says pre-owned bottles. And you can see they sell from $80 to that one. These other ones are in the $50 range. Um, and if we pull up a listing, for example, it'll say this one says near full in the listing. Uh, and I'll show you the category that they have it listed under. So it's other perfume collectibles. So that's how you would list yours at home. Um, I'm assuming this is the same. This just says open box. It doesn't necessarily say how full it is. They do say they don't know if it's used, just that it's as is, same thing. And it's under other perfume collectibles here in the category. And finally, let's go down to that bottom one that sold for 80 bucks. This one says it's 90% full. Um, I'm thinking that mine is 50% full. I'm going to see if I can get a better angle. I can actually see it. This, uh, this does look pretty full. I'm going to guess this is at least 80% full. So I'll, I'll sell it like 80% full and try to get maybe, even if I get $50, which I think would be a fantastic deal for the consumer, uh, it's a really good deal for me. Obviously, we'll cover this whole box and more even at 50 bucks, but I'll probably still try to get like 60, 65 bucks for it. And same thing, they put it under other perfume collectibles. So as you can see, that's how you that's how you go out and you research and look up these used perfumes in case you did not know uh, that you can actually sell used colognes and and perfumes so overall that garage sale i think went really well for 20 bucks i think i'm going to have a few hundred dollars in sales maybe 250 300 in sales and i think i'm going to end up net profiting at least 150 bucks on all this stuff so i appreciate you guys watching and uh thanks for all the new folks and the old folks that have been coming back i appreciate all of you and we'll see you out in the wilds